All right, so in this problem, we have a wheel that's 20 pounds. We have this block, which is 30 pounds. And we are given the static friction coefficients at both of our points of contact. And they want us to determine the smallest vertical force that we can apply here, which will cause motion to impend. So remember, all that means is we're going to have our P force start at zero. We're going to imagine that we're creating that force. We start with nothing, then we start pushing, start pushing, start pushing. And at some point, motion is going to occur. Whether this block slips or tips, whether this wheel slips or tips, in this case, in this case tipping just means we're rolling, and slipping means we're kind of skidding, kind of like a car does before it begins a race. As we increase that force, up to a certain point, one of those situations are going to happen. And it's the force at this point, that minimum force needed to cause motion, that is the answer to this question. So I'm trying to visualize this whole picture and kind of play out what's going to happen. If I'm here and I start pushing down, the first thing that comes to my mind is that this wheel is just going to start rolling like that. It's going to want to roll this way, which is going to cause this block over here to either slip or tip. I mean, I feel like from the picture it's going to tip because look how far up that rope is. But remember, we got to let the numbers prove to us that it's going to tip. But from the picture, and from the dimensions of this crate here, I think it's going to rotate about this point, most likely. But I also think that if this surface right here was ice, if it had like no friction, imagine a perfectly slippery surface, and I applied this force, well, this thing might just roll in place and it may not actually translate. So this kind of blows my mind here because we have a lot of different combinations. This could, this could slip and this could tip, or maybe this could tip and this could tip, or maybe this could tip and this could slide. There, I think there's four combinations right there. And I don't, I don't like that. So. My inclination is that how about how would I prove real quick that this is going to tip? I know that as I increase my pushing force here, that external driving force is going to cause this rope to tighten. It's going to cause that tension to increase on that crate. I'm sure we could come and do an analysis here real quick and prove that as this tension force increases in, in response to this, that this thing will want to tip first and therefore this thing's only gonna this is old things only gonna be tipping and that would just really narrow down the possibilities in my head so if I assume this thing tips I know that my normal force is gonna be concentrated here at the tipping point there's my point of tip my point of rotation of course, I'll still have friction here. This will be static friction. And I'll just call this T right here. Of course, the weight, and the weight is 30. And of course, the dimensions as well. So I can sum my moments about this point and figure out that force T necessary to cause that rotation. That'll be my moment equation. Moment arm of my tension is that full three. 
and the moment arm of my 30 is going to be half of that 1.5. So I can solve for t, and I'll get a 7.5. And if I assume that this block slides to the left, I know that this friction force, the static friction force, will be all maxed out us times the normal force well I know that there's only two y forces here so I know that they must balance each other out because we have no motion in the y so right off the bat I already know that that normal force is going to be a 30 so if I do a sum of forces in the x I got that t going to the left and I have that max friction force going to the right. We can solve for that T pretty easily. And that T will equal a 9. So of course, as we increase our P force, that tension will be increasing and you can see that as we increase that as that tension force is increased rotation will be the thing that happens so I really know it's impossible like we suspected for this thing to slide so now that we know that we can focus on our wheel so now looking at our wheel course we have the weight of it at 20 pounds we're gonna have a normal force as well up from the ground now friction of course could either be this way or this way I always go through some thought experiments to figure out which way it is if I imagine that this is ice and I push down here we're gonna wanna spin like that spin in place. Again, imagine a, driving a car on ice. The wheel's going to want to spin like that. And if I'm wanting to spin like this, friction is going to want to oppose that. So the static friction is going to be this way. And lastly, we have the tension of that rope. So first, I'll assume that we roll. We tip about that point. And since I don't know this friction force, taking my moment about this tipping point would be a great idea. It eliminates three forces. So the moment arm of that P will be the radius. That will create a positive moment, because I always assume that my positive rotational direction is clockwise, counterclockwise, excuse me, so 1.5 times P, and then T will have a big moment arm of the diameter, which will be 3, and its moment will be negative. So I actually have two unknowns here, which stops me in my tracks. I'm used to getting a nice answer out of this. So this is where it gets extremely conceptual here. I gotta imagine controlling this force here and something that works a lot for me in getting me to engage my mind and conceptualize things is imagine creating this force by first putting like a grain of sand, a very tiny force. Well, a very tiny force here will cause that tension to pick up a bit such that we have moment equilibrium. We don't get any rotation. Well, I could put uh, some feathers on here and increase the force some more. I could put a stack of coins on it and increase that force more. And what this math equation is telling me is that as long as I keep increasing that force P, that tension force must keep increasing to balance out this guy's moment. 
and I can keep shooting this P up and this tension will have to e keep increasing as well. But of course I know that this rope is not an unlimited supply of force. I really know that that tension has a limit at some point. That tension, the rope won't break, but that tension force will cause this guy to rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that, all right, this tension, let's say that it's at its, at its maximum limit. And let's see what P we've increased to such that we bring that maximum tension out of that rope. So we'll do that math there. And what I get is a 15. So 15 will cause both to tip. So I process that. I imagine, all right, we can keep increasing this P and we're safe. No rotation, no rotation. But what if at some point here, I find that the wheel slips. So, if the wheel slips, that means, of course, this static friction will be at its maximum limit. So let me set up those equations over here. So I can set up my sum forces in the x, in which going to the right is positive. And what do I have? I have a plus t. And I have a minus that maximum force of static friction. And that's it for the x's. And I could sum up my forces in the y, in which going up is positive. And what do I have? I have that P force going down. I have the normal force going up. And I have the weight going down. And we have got to be very, very careful here. One, two, three unknowns. And what a lot of people would do is they would just plug in that 7.5 for t, get it down to two equations, two unknowns, and call it a day. Think about it. What does plugging in t as 7.5 mean? Well, it means that I've increased my p force enough such that I have caused the tension to get up to that point. And I'm totally neglecting the possibility that I could have some slippage occurring before that. So I know as I, as I stack on more weight to that P force, I know that my T will increase in tandem. And actually, that relationship is given by this equation here. So watch me get T by itself over here. It'll be P divided by 2. This equation tells me that as I put more and more weight on that P, it tells me how that T increases in response. So that's what I'm going to put here. So I'm going to put P over 2 in for that T. And then let's run the math and see what we get. So two equations, two unknowns, we'll solve that P and I'll get a 13.33. So it looks like a force of 13.33 will cause the wheel to slip. And of course, as I bump up that P, that situation is going to happen first. But that really confuses me because this math is saying that this thing will slip 
without this thing ever moving. I mean, at the beginning, I thought that both of them have to move at the same time. But her math is telling us that this is not the case. Let's imagine putting more and more weight on that P until we bump up to 13.33. If my P here is a 13.33, let's divide that by 2. 6.6 repeating for the T. So if I've increased P enough to 13.33, where the wheel slips, look at where my T at. It's not even at that tipping threshold. So looks like our math is telling me that this is going to slip, but this is not going to slip. Tip is not going to move at all. And how is that possible? And, the, and as I sort of played it out in my head, I was thinking that, you know what, if this thing, this whole thing is going to sort of jump to the right like that. I sort of just saw that in my head. And it actually makes sense for the math because if our T is a 6.6, .6, we can calculate this maximum static friction force just like we got P to be 13.33. We can solve that N, and that's a 33.33 repeating times that 5.2 to get our maximum static friction force, and that is also 6.66. .66. So really funny enough, this tension causes this whole thing to slide that way. So extremely, extremely conceptual and just make sure you're you're taking them step by step and really visualizing it the place where everyone goes wrong is they get that 15 when they uh, assume that this guy's going to rotate and then for the slipping they just plug in the 7.5 in for T like they just did for the tipping but as it is, our answer is 13.33. All right, hope this problem made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments.